Good morning. My name is Sue Morris. I'm the clinical nurse educator at the New Brunswick Heart Center. And today we are going to do a demonstration of how to set up a pulmonary artery catheter that has been inserted in our cardiac catheterization lab. So when the patient arrives, this is what you will have. So our lab is really good at calling us and letting us know that a patient with a pulmonary artery catheter would be arriving. So prior to his arrival, you need to have a few things ready. And so let's take a look at our, what I refer to as plumbing. So here I have a pressure bag. This pressure bag is connected to two regular pressure tubings. And so I have chosen to just use one bag and you can see that I have cannulated both of the tabs that are at the bottom of an IV bag. So for example, this one has a single IV connected to it. I could in theory, use this one if I were going to set up this, the flush system. So here we are, I flushed our tubing. And what I have done, because sometimes it's very difficult to keep organized, especially as a newer nurse, not exposed to a lot of PA catheters, you can see that this manifold, this is what we call a manifold. Some people call it a uh, holder. Some people say the art line thingy, but it's referred to as a manifold. And it has four designated slots. So here, red is arterial. If you can see this well enough, you can see it says RA slash CVP. Right atrium and CVP are the same thing because there are no valves coming into the heart. So it is in the color blue. And the nice thing about that is when we connect it to our space lab monitor, and we'll do a demo of that shortly, you will see that an art line tracing is always in red. A CVP tracing or waveform is always in blue. And so I make sure that I put that back in and it just friction fits or slides. And the tail, the white connector always hangs down. So here is my first flush tubing. And so what I have done is I have taped it up here so that when my patient arrives, I'm ready to connect it. The second flush system sits in the slot that is yellow that says PA. And so this will prove very helpful when the patient arrives. Additionally, I have run a regular continue flow tubing so just flushed it through. And then I have put a three-way stopcock with a syringe. So it can be a syringe of saline or it can be an empty syringe because we are going to use this bag to do cardiac output. And when we measure cardiac output, we measure it from the right atrium. So here is our pressure tubing that we are going to connect to the right atrium. So here's our pressure tubing here. This is going to be connected to the PA catheter. But you'll see that there is a sampling port here. You are going to take your continue flow tubing, keep the stopcock off for now, and you're going to remove and discard that cap. Next, you're going to take the sterile cap that is on the three-way stopcock, discard that, 
and you are going to marry these two together. And so I'm going to connect. So this is my CVP line. Here is the sampling port closest to the patient. And it has a continue flow with a 10 mil syringe. And you'll understand why in a few moments. So my patient arrives. I'm going to put on a sterile mask because I have to disconnect this catheter from its source. So the very first thing I do is check and make sure I have the right patient. I do an assessment of his armband. And then, and I'm just gonna take my mask off so that the video can be interpreted a little better. But remember, you should have a sterile mask on for this portion of the uh, setup. So here is my patient's pulmonary artery catheter. His happens to be in his right internal jugular. Many times in our cardiac catheterization lab, our physicians will do a femoral access. And so there's two different things that you need to remember about that. When a catheter is in the jugular, you're going to look at this catheter and you're gonna see that there are lines on this. You can see a large line, thick black, and a thin line. So the thick black is 50 centimeters, the thin is 10 centimeters. So when I look at this area right here, this is the 60 centimeter mark. It is marked off every 10 centimeters. So I need to check and make sure where this catheter is. And so when I look at this particular patient, I figure that his PA catheter is in at about 52 centimeters. So if you're going through the jugular, your catheter hub should be anywhere between 45 and about 60 centimeters. But if you are accessing the patient via the femoral vein, then it's going to be closer to 80 centimeters because of the distance away from the heart. So that's just a little reminder. So I have my pulmonary artery catheter. I have my sterile mask on. And so remember, everything is color coded here. So I have the tubing that's sitting in the blue manifold or the blue component of the manifold. I have my mask on. I'm going to come over to the PA catheter and it has a number of tails. And so I'm going to find the blue tail and I'm going to look and I don't know if you can see that but what it will say on the white portion of the blue tail is proximal injectate. But you're gonna notice that there is no clamp on here. You cannot connect this directly to this one link. Because there is a one-way valve in here, and that actually impedes the waveform transferability. So you are going to kink this as best you can. Do not use a Kelly clamp because this is very fragile um, plastic. And so I've got my mask on. I've taken the cap off of my pressure tubing. And I'm going to take the cap off. I'm going to try and do this at end expiration, but a lot of times that's not possible. And so I am going to disconnect. And now I'm going to connect this flush tubing. The next plumbing that I am going to connect is my PA port. And so for convenience, I had taped it up here so it doesn't drag on the floor and become contaminated. 
So now I am going to look for the port that says PA distal. So again, I've got my mask on for this component. I'm kinking my tubing, disconnecting or taking off the cap of my flush system, which is already flush. There is water to, uh, right out to the end. Now I am going to disconnect the cap and very quickly reconnect. So you can see there is a sampling port here in the PA distal. If you wanted to ensure that there was no air, you could connect a regular 10 mil syringe to this. I'm going to keep this cap sterile so I can reuse it. I'm going to connect the 10 mils. I'm going to turn this off to the bag and open to the patient. And I am going to aspirate a little bit of fluid until I see blood. And because we are not connected to a real patient, I don't have any red blood here. But then I would look and make sure, is there any air in this tubing? If there were, I would continue to aspirate and relieve this system of its air. Then I would remove this syringe, it's no longer of use. I would put my sterile cap back on. And now to flush the tubing, because I have some blood up here, I am going to come over here to PA. So again, this is connected to the yellow tail. So I will go over here to where the yellow label is. And I'm just gonna give a few pulls of this pigtail. And I'm going to do it not as a long, continuous pull. I'm going to do it in short, quick intervals. I will see fluid coming from here, and it will clear this line. And I would do the exact same thing for the right atrium, or the CVP. But remember, I have already connected my continue flow tubing. So here we are, CVP connected to the blue lumen. So now you have to think a little bit about stopcocks. And, and I find that nurses are a little bit challenged with stopcocks. So first, I want to turn this stopcock off to the bag and open to my patient. But in order to aspirate from this syringe, I need to turn this one off to the continue flow bag up here. So now when I look, I have a nice open system and I'm gonna pull back on this syringe until I see blood in the tubing. I'm going to assess, is there any air in here? And if there is, I will continue aspirating and getting all of this air out of the system. Once I have ensured that air is out of the system, I'm gonna turn it off to that continue flow tubing. And now I need to flush my CVP or my RA. Again, this is a blue tail. I'm going to come over here to the blue uh, label on the manifold and I am going to give quick consecutive pulls to my pigtail until I have seen the blood clear in this line. So now you've hooked up your PA and your CVP. But up here on this monitor, you have nothing except your ECG. In order to do that, we need two cables. And so right now, 
I only have one to show you. But what I need is this that's going to connect into my Space Lab monitor. And then I'm going to have two of these long gray cables. One end fits in, just friction fits in. And this will friction fit into a red area in the monitor. So just like you would setting up an art line. And so now, when I connect this cable, so the other end of the cable that I've shown, and again, it friction fits into the white tail of your flush line, you're going to see that this has come up. And the first thing you're going to say to yourself, especially if you're a newer nurse, you're going to say, oh, what is PAS? I don't know what that is. Well, you're in control of the situation. So what you're going to do is you're going to touch this and you're going to go to label select. And you know that you have connected it to a CVP. So you're going to touch CVP and you'll see Oh, now it has turned to blue, but it is telling you that it is not zeroed. So what that means is, is this machine will get confused. Am I looking at internal pressure or am I looking at atmospheric pressure? And so we don't want atmospheric pressure to influence anything. So what we are going to do is we are going to come over to our CVP tubing. And we are going to turn this stopcock off to the patient. And then we will remove this cap. We'll maintain sterility so we can reuse it. And we'll give a little flush and some water will come out of this sampling port here. So now, I need to go back to my monitor, and you can see down here in the right-hand corner, it says zero. So I'm going to touch that button, and I'm going to wait until the CVP comes up with one zero. And I'm patiently waiting. In the real world, it will happen quite quickly. Um, so I've got minus one, I'm looking for zero. There we go. So what I have done by doing this is I have opened the system up to air and told the, the system atmospheric pressure is zero. So now my system can ignore atmospheric pressure. So I've maintained sterility of this little cap I'm going to put it back on. And then I'm going to turn the stopcock back off to the little cap. If this were connected to a real patient, what I would see here now is a CVP waveform. This waveform right here is what you will see a CVP look like. So it's a small waveform. It has five components to it, an A, C, V, an X and a Y descent. What you're looking for is that this waveform shows up under your CVP screen. And later on in this video, I will give you a demonstration using my simulator. So, I repeat that entire process for my PA. Another tubing, which 
would be connected into here, connected to the white tail of my pressure tubing. And when that waveform comes up, I'll say, okay, I know I have this connected to my PA. Now I'm going to hit, I would go to label select and I would hit PA. And so now you see that the waveform is yellow. Again, I would turn my stopcock off to the patient. So the patient is over here. Open up, maintain sterility of the cap. Give a little flush so that fluid comes out this port. And then I would touch my zero button again. You'll notice that you're going to get two zeros under PA because PA measures systolic and diastolic pressure, whereas CVP measures a mean or an average in just one pressure. So I'm not getting zero and zero. I'm getting zero and minus one. If this were connected to a patient, you would expect to get zero and zero. So we'll say that zero, zero has shown up. I'm gonna put my sterile cap back on here. And I'm going to turn the stopcock back to my air port or my sampling port. So that is the plumbing connection. There's two more things with regard to setup. The next thing that we're going to do is take a saline flush. So a saline flush. This port is white and it says proximal infusion. All this is is an extra intravenous port. So if you're going to use it, you can connect your IV to it. But if you are not going to use it, you need to saline lock it. And so again, before you inject anything in, you're going to aspirate back to ensure you've got blood and that you are not pushing air into the patient's pulmonary artery. So saline lock, the white port that says proximal infusion. And then you're left with this tail. And you will notice that there are little tiny wires in here. Nurses are, are really good at jamming things together. And that's a very bad idea because if I ruin any of these little tines, I can't measure cardiac output. And that is really the most valuable piece of information that we garner from a PA catheter. So now we need to find additional cables. So you're gonna have this short little fuchsia color and it's going to connect to a special cable. So first I'm gonna friction fit this into my space lab where it says CO, cardiac output. And so I push it in. And then I have this bifurcated cable. So it bifurcates, cuts into two. And I am going to insert it. Again, everything with space labs is great. It just friction fits together most of the time. So now I have two ends of this. My first end is a temperature probe. And I am going to take this temperature probe and I am going to connect it to that bag of fluid that I have a continued flow tubing on. And I'm just going to use a piece of waterproof tape and tape it there. You're probably wondering, why would we do this? Well, when we do cardiac output, we use the thermodilution method. 
And so that's basically putting a known volume, which is going to be 10 mils, of a set temperature. So we need to know the temperature of the injectate. And so this probe is going to give us information up on our monitor. And then the other half of this cable is going to fit in to that port that I showed you where the tines are. And so you can see that there are holes in this, but also a slot. And so this groove fits in. So see how easily it goes in. I don't force it. And then this is the one thing that I do have to screw together. So this cable connects to my pulmonary artery catheter at this port. At the very end of a pulmonary artery catheter, so sitting in the patient's pulmonary artery. So in this example right here, the tip of the catheter is in the pulmonary artery. The catheter has a thermistor on it and it will give us our core temperature. And so now we have all of the plumbing set up to look at our patient. When I hit normal screen, I see that I have a CO button here. CO meaning cardiac output. I can see it says TB and TI. TB means temperature blood, so that would be your core temperature. Mine is saying it's out of range now, obviously, because I haven't got it connected to a patient. But underneath it is TI, temperature injectate. So up here, this probe is giving me a temperature of 21.6. So that when I go to inject 10 mils into my right atrium to do a cardiac output, then the machine knows what the temperature of this. And so it measures how long it takes for me to inject into the right atrium and that 21.6 degree water or fluid to reach the end of the catheter that's in the pulmonary artery. So it measures a difference or a change in temperature over a period of time and it will give you a waveform. And we will look at that in just a moment. So this is connection of all of your tubing. And part two of this video is going to go over the parameters Okay, so here we are, we have gone through the plumbing of the patient. And so now we need to look at our numbers. So first of all, I have not connected my arterial line yet. And so when I look, I have one labeled art. But I know that is not an arterial waveform. I know this is my CVP, because the waveform is small. And so I'm going to go in, I'm going to hit label select, and I'm going to hit CVP. Perfect. Now I have a blue waveform. This next one here is also blue. But when I look at the waveform, I know it's a PA tracing. So I'm going to touch this, label select, and touch PA. And now when I go to hook up my art line, it's going to go here. I'll hit label select. And so now everything is color coded. It says PA and CVP not zeroed. So I am going to again come over to my pressure tubing, turn it off to the patient 
And because this is a simulator, I will show you what you will see. And so I've turned it off to the patient, and now I have a static line, so no movement. Then I come down here and I hit zero. And I am waiting for it to zero. And so I see a zero come up there. We'll assume that it did. And now I want to go back and look at my waveform. So I turn my stopcock off to the sampling port. And now it's connected to my patient. And my waveform comes back. So now we are going to look at the Space Lab monitor. As you can see, I have two waveforms. One is yellow for PA, and the other is blue for CVP. But neither one of them are zeroed. So I'm going to come over to my manifold, and I'm going to turn both of these stopcocks off to the patient. I'm going to take the caps off and maintain sterility. And what you will see is a static line. So now both of my waveforms are flat. I'm going to give my pigtails each a flush. And I'm going to hit zero for both of them. And so I should get zero, zero for PA, which I have, and zero for CVP. Now I am going to put my sterile caps back on. And I am going to turn them back to the patient. As soon as you do that, you're going to get your waveform to come back. And so allow me to get my simulator up and running. And so finally, we have a PA and a CVP. I now need to level my patient. So here is a plain old carpenter's level. It has a line level in the middle. Some are wooden, some are metal. I prefer the metal ones for um, cleanliness reasons. And so I am going to remove my patient's bed clothing and his Johnny shirt and I am going to find his sternal notch. And I am going to sit one end of the level on his sternal notch. And then I am going to place the other end on top of the manifold. However, there has been a bit of a um, deficiency in our equipment. So what we are trying to do right now is level all of our measurements to our right atrium. And if you took the average patient and you went from sternum into the right atrium, it's about five centimeters. So we want this transducer, this microchip, to be at the same level as the patient's right atrium. But if you measure from the top down to the microchip, it's only four centimeters. So what you can do is you can take your finger and you can set it on top of the manifold between the level. Some of our levels have little tiny orange squares taped on them. If you have a level that has a square, put the square on top of the manifold. And so 
I'm going to look at my line level, and I'm actually going to move this patient's up just a little bit so that the bubble is in between the two lines. So if something were level, the bubble will be between the two lines. So that tells you that your equipment, the little microchip here, is level with your right atrium. And now you can see your measurements. So I have a PA, or a blood pressure, in the pulmonary artery of 25 over 10. And I have a preload of the right heart of around 12. So I can, if I'm working in my coronary care unit, I can look up on my wall and I'll see a nice pink chart that gives me all of my normals. So spend a little time getting to know what your normals are. If I wanted to put this on a scale, I could touch PA and then go down here to scales. See how nicely that waveform shows up now? And I may dim the lights a little bit so that you could see it better. There, might be, might be easier for you to see. And so a waveform in a pulmonary artery looks exactly like a waveform in our radial artery. However, it's a much lower pressure. So, my top number, my systolic is 25, my diastolic is 10. This is textbook numbers. This gentleman probably didn't need a pulmonary artery catheter. When I look at his CVP, I'm going to go back and hit normal screen. And do you see how the waveform is small? I want to make it a little bit more robust. So I'm going to touch CVP. And I'm going to go here to size. And so I can increase until I get the waveform that I like. Also, I find my PA is a little dampened. If I go in here to size, it's not the actual waveform that's dampened. It's my size on my monitor. And so I always find that bigger is better. You can see more. So when I look at my patient's CVP, I can also look at this as a scale, in a scale. So I touch CVP, I hit scales, and now you see, oh goodness, this is really, really small. But if you notice that the scale goes from zero to 200, well, we know that a normal CVP is between two and six millimeters of mercury. So I'm going to change the top numeric value by hitting scale. And I only want it to go as high as 20. So I enter 20. See how nicely you can see that now? So the scale just gives you a better look at your waveforms. So now, you'll need to do a wedge. And so there's two ways that you can do a wedge. First of all, you're going to take your catheter, and I'll just turn up the light so you can see it a little better. And you're going to see that this catheter has a syringe on it. If you take that syringe off, don't worry, air is not going to be pulled into the patient. But when you pull it down, it only goes to 1.5 cc's. If you inadvertently drop this on the floor, you need to open a brand new PA catheter package so that you can get a new one. This needs to be a volume limiting syringe, so don't put a 3 mil syringe on here. 
So I'm going to connect it. I'm pulling it down to 1.5 cc's of air. And I'm connecting it. And you can see that this line is solid. And if I push it this way, my line is broken. A broken line means it's locked. A straight line or an unbroken line means it's open. And so I think you should always leave your catheter in the open position, but remove the air out of it. So when you're not using it, it will sit like this. When you need to do a wedge, and that's a physician order, you're going to fill it to 1.5 mils. Then you're going to touch your PA and you're going to go to scales. And so I'm going to dim the lights again so that I can show you what happens when I inject or push in 1.5 mils of air into the end of this pulmonary artery catheter because there is a balloon there. And so here is my PA tracing up on the screen and I am going to inject my air. And when I do, you can see the drop and I'm going to hit freeze and then I'm going to release the air out of my catheter because if I continue to keep that in a wedged position, there is a part of my pulmonary vasculature which is not being fed by blood and oxygen. So, if I look up at the screen, I can see that the number in brackets is six. But I can also use my arrows to move my cursor up and down. And so to do a wedge, you take the average of the top of the wave and the bottom of the wave. And so you can see where I have put my cursor I think I'm happiest with it there. And right here, it tells me cursor equals six. But as a novice nurse, I can look at this numeric value. It correlates very well. So even if I didn't put my waveform on scales, I could inject my air and I would see this wedge and I would see that that is the numeric value. As soon as I release the air, then I should get the waveform going back to my PA tracing. And that's important. Whenever you see a wedged tracing, you should think in the back of your mind, there's a piece of pulmonary tissue not being fed properly. So I have gotten my wedge of six. I've got a CVP of 12, which is a little elevated. Normal is two to six, so I'm kind of curious what's happening with this patient. Now I want to do a cardiac output. So I touch the cardiac output button, and I wait just a moment. And then I'm going to go to height and weight. And I have to put my patient's height and weight in in order to get a cardiac index. So a cardiac index is much more valuable as a numeric value than a cardiac output is. So if we took a very large patient and a very small patient, if each of them had a cardiac output of four liters, that is textbook normal. However, the very large gentleman may not be uh, looking as well as the smaller patient because we haven't taken the height and weight into consideration. But if we put the height and weight in, then we can calculate a cardiac index. So I touch my height. His happens to be 170, which is the default, so I hit enter. 
weight. He, in my default, is 70 kgs. My guy is 80. So I'm going to increase it until I get 80, and I hit Enter. Now I'm going to come to my system, and I'm going to find my blue tail. And I'm going to follow it back until I find the continue flow tubing attached to the pressure tubing. And so I'm going to hit previous menu. I'm going to touch cardiac output. And then on this screen, it says manual and auto. As a new nurse, I want you to use the auto button. And so, you are going to turn the stopcock of the continue flow tubing off to the pressure tubing, and you are going to draw up 10 mils of fluid. Just unclamp, so I'm drawing up 10 mils of fluid. I'm going to turn it off to that, and I'm actually going to take this off and ensure that I get all of the air out of this. And so now, I want to inject this 10 mils, and I don't want to hang on to it because my body heat will warm it up, because it is the same temperature as the, tube, as the fluid in this bag, because that's where I've drawn it from. So now I'm going to turn the continue flow stopcock off to the bag. And then I'm going to look at my patient and I think, well, if I tried to inject this, this stopcock is prohibiting me from doing that. So I'm going to turn this stopcock off to the flush system so that fluid's going to come down and into my right atrium. And so very rapidly, I am going to inject my 10 mils. So it says, inject when ready. And so I'm going to show you on my simulator how I would do it. But this is how I hold the syringe. So it's connected here. I hold it like this. And then very rapidly, inject my fluid into my patient. And so what you are going to see when you do that is just hang on a moment and I will simulate that for you. So you're going to see a waveform start here. And so this is you injecting the fluid. And oh my, this patient has a very low cardiac output. That's okay, it tells me inject one ready and I am going to do another one. So I'm gonna start, I do my injection and I can see that my waveform remains low, and so I'm gonna do a third one. So I wait until the inject when ready indicator is up here. And so now again, I'm filling up my syringe by turning my stopcocks, and I am going to start my injection. And so right now you can see I have TB temperature blood 37.1, but it's telling me TI, the injectate up here, is too warm. And sorry, that is my simulator and I, I can't fix that. Uh, it just has to uh, be set up for a couple of hours um, prior to 
So in your world, you will have temperature inject date and it will be the temperature of the fluid in this bag. So now I am going to hit the average all button. Do I want to average them? Yes. And so over here, I have a cardiac index of one, or sorry, a cardiac output of 1.3 liters per minute. Very, very low. And here you will see CI equals 0 0.7. CI is cardiac index. And a normal cardiac index is 2.5 liters per minute per meter squared to 4.0 liters per minute per meter squared. So this patient has a very low cardiac output. I bet you this correlates with his ejection fraction on echo, which is about 22%. So definitely correlates. So now I am going to go to calcs. And it takes me to an area where I can put vital signs. So I'm going to go up here and touch the box that I want to manipulate. If you've done a number of cardiac outputs, you'll have a number of boxes there. So I highlight my box and I hit vital signs. So it asks me for heart rate, but it takes it off the monitor. If I had an art line in this patient, then it would take the mean arterial pressure off of my machine. But I don't, so I will calculate my map. And to calculate a map, you take your systolic, you add two times your diastolic. So systolic blood pressure is 100, diastolic is 50. So systolic of 100 times two times the diastolic, so 50 times two is 100. I add those together. So 100 plus 100 equals 200, and I divide by three. So I have a, a mean arterial pressure of about 61 millimeters of mercury. So my map, I'm gonna put in here 61. My CVP is 12. It's taken it from the machine. It's taken the map of my pulmonary system also. You can see the average of the map here is 15, and it has put it here. And the one number I have to enter is my wedge. And when we wedged him, we got a numeric value of 6. So when you look at these numbers, you're gonna be like, oh my goodness, some of these don't make sense to me. I want you to go back to your previous menu and I'm gonna get our biomedical department to see if we can change the default. There are two things here that you have to remember to do in order for your numbers to make sense. There is VR index and SW index. I want you to turn them both off. And then you can see you have cardiac output, cardiac index, you have a stroke volume, how much blood this gentleman is pumping out with each beat. A normal is about 70. He's only got 22 mils being pumped out each beat. Then we have a uh, SVR and a PVR. Those are the afterloads of our heart. The SVR is afterload of left heart. The PVR is afterload of right heart. Then other numbers give us our, what's called our stroke work index. How hard our right and left ventricle are working. And don't forget, if you can't keep those numbers in your head, which I don't expect you can for you know, a lengthy period into your career, take a look at the pink sheet that is posted in each of the rooms in coronary care. And so then when we're all done, we hit normal screen. So that we're always looking at the blood pressure in the pulmonary system. We're always looking at the CVP on the right side of the heart. And that brings us to the end 
One more thing I would like to point out, and I'm going to turn the lights back on, and I'm going to show you two things that we now have in our coronary care posted on the wall. Every unit, every room in our coronary care will soon have this chart, and it is all of the inotropes and vasopressors that we use, what we expect when we administer them, how to prepare them, what the actual dose range is, how to titrate it up, how to wean it down, what the peak onset and duration of the drug is, and what we should be looking for. And then you will also have this pink sheet, which gives you all of your normal lab uh, values for hemodynamic monitoring. So make sure that you take a peek at the walls in your CCU. There are 14 rooms. Each room has one of these and one of these. Thank you for your attention.